Heavenly greetings in Jesus' name. Yes, the Lord be with your spirit. And I believe the Lord is with your spirit right now. Remember, we need no more to make us happy, to make us joyful, to make us at peace than to have the Lord Jesus Christ with our spirit. Lord, bless me to the extent that I love Share, show mercy and compassion to others in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you sincerely pray this prayer? Unfortunately, for many of us, love is lost today. Christianity is not a religion but a relationship. But without love, Christianity becomes a mere religion. Faith without love is faithless. Jesus Christ came from heaven to restore the relationship between you and God. Yes, it's a love relationship. Ask yourself, how many times have you said, I love you to God today? How many times have you said, I love you to your neighbor today? Do you know that as a believer, our lives are measured by the love we have for God and the love we have for our fellow human beings? Love is lost. Without love, Christianity becomes a mere religious practice. And if Christianity is just a mere religious practice, a religious way of talking, walking, behaving, then social divides would divide us. Every type of division would divide us. But it is Christ's love that breaks all barriers, removes all obstacles. It's that love that made Matthew a tax collector leave his booth and follow Jesus. It's that love that made James, John, Peter drop their nets and follow Jesus. It's that love that made me, 15 years ago, leave my home, my country, my dreams, and follow Jesus. Where? I went to Nigeria to follow Jesus through his servant, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Nothing can be compared to the power of the words, I love you, when they're spoken from the heart. Ask Ruth, my namesake, in that book of Ruth 1, verse 16 to 17, when she said to Naomi, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Those words changed not just her generation, but generations yet to come. They changed her destiny. Ask yourself today, are you known by your love? Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 13, that the greatest in the sight of God is the one who loves his neighbor. Check yourself, are you known by your love? Or do you find your heart slipping slowly, steadily into being judgmental, into being accusing, into being divisive, into being self-righteous? When you read the Gospels, do you see the picture of yourself in the Pharisees? Or do you see a picture of yourself in the sinner who has found the joy of salvation? Remember what happened to Zacchaeus when he climbed the sycamore tree? The crowd were judging Jesus when, Je when Jesus said, come down from your tree, today I will eat at your house. They said, this man is eating with sinners. But Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. And what did Zacchaeus say? He said, I will give half my possessions to the poor. And if anyone I've cheated, I'll pay them back four times. His conscience provoked him to confess the wrong life he'd been living. The kingdom of God had come into his heart. It's not the good works we do. Remember, you can never do enough good works. No matter how fine an attitude you have, it cannot earn God's forgiveness. It cannot earn his love. It's important for us to remember often that we are sinners saved by grace. And this grace is for everyone. Yes, this grace is for the women as well as the men for the weak as well as the strong, for the ignorant as well as the knowledgeable. Yes. 
remembrance that you are saved by grace should bring compassion to your heart because you know that you yourself were once a sinner, an enemy of God before God forgave you. Are you known by your love? Ask yourself this question, what was the difference between the apostles, the disciples of Jesus before Pentecost and after the Holy Spirit came? You know, before Pentecost, they were used in great signs and wonders. Jesus sent them out two by two and they were used to perform signs, miracles. People were healed, people were delivered, people were set free. But after the coming of the Holy Spirit in their lives, what was the greatest difference? They were more like Jesus Christ in character, in love, in compassion, in faith, in humility, in the fruit of the Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, He wants to be Himself in you. Yes, when the Holy Spirit comes, He comes into a heart with the aim of producing a holy character. Who's in charge of your life? Is it the spirit of truth? Is it the spirit of faithfulness? Is it the spirit of humility, love, kindness, self-control? Who is in charge of your life? If you find yourself having slipped into becoming judgmental, remember, we're not called to judge anyone. If you judge, who will judge you on the last day? Remember the words of Jesus when Jesus came and ate in the house of Matthew, the tax collector. The Pharisees came by and saw the scene. They complained to his disciples saying, your master eats with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus overheard their words. He told them, it's not the healthy that need a doctor, but the sick. I've come not for those who are well, but for those who are sick. Now understand this, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Do you know that our God is a God of mercy and compassion? Are you known by your love? What kind of love? Loving those who love you. There's no reward in that. There's no difficulty in that. My mentor, Prophet T.B. Joshua said, and he taught us in his daily life, if you want to learn to love better, start with those who hate you. Start with those who see no good thing in you. How many of those kind of people are on your daily prayer list? Is your love a truly interceding love? Because that is the kind of love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. That them, the offended and the offenders, the good and the bad. Yes, Father, forgive them. In the book of Matthew 5, 43 to 45, we are told that God makes his son and rain to shine and to fall on all alike. He loves everyone with the same unconditional love with which he loves you. To what extent is your love like that? Remember the rebuke that Jesus gave James and John when he called them the sons of thunder, when they wanted to use the power of God to call down fire from on high and consume the Samaritans. Because the Samaritans were people that they didn't like. There was an age-old division between the people. But Jesus rebuked them because his love came to break every division. His love came to break every divide. You see, you will understand that Jesus cannot give his spirit to anyone to remain in their heart if love is not there. Because Galatians 5 verse 6 says that faith works by love. Unless you say the name Jesus in the lips of love and faith, it can do nothing. It can do nothing. Faith without love is faithless. That is why if we fail to preach love, if we fail to act love, we find ourselves in religious practice. In a world that's ever increasingly divisive, do you find yourselves becoming divisive in your heart? Do you find yourself becoming judgmental in your heart? We're called not to get used to the dark, but to shine as light. Yes, that is what Jesus said. That is what Jesus wants us to do. Remember, Jesus has no hands but your hands to show his love. Jesus has no mouth but your mouth to tell people how he died. 
Jesus has no feet but your feet to lead men and women to his side. Jesus wants to use your faculties. Jesus wants to use everything about you. You see, you need to understand that it's not the amount of times you go to church. It's not the amount of times you pray and fast. It's not the Christian names or titles that you bear. It's how many lives you changed. That's what matters to Jesus Christ. How many lives have you changed? How many people have you led to love today? We're called to be the eyes and ears of Jesus. And if you look through the eyes of Jesus, you'll see things that normally you would never see. If you walk down a street, you'll see people that normally you would never see. You'll come around people, you'll see people not who have what you have, or who need what you have. Don't just come around people today because of what you can get, but because of what you can give. It's all about the kingdom of God. And that kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Do you find yourself like Jonah, frustrated at the Lord's compassion for the people of Nineveh, for an unsaved generation who are lost? The heart of God, we can read it in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, where we see that the heart of God is mercy. Yes, mercy triumphs over judgment. That is the promise of God. He's not slow as we seem that he's slow, no, but he wants everyone to come to repentance. Think about the Ark of Noah. You that has the, the grace to have the knowledge of saving grace, Maybe you have a specific date you remember accepting Jesus into your life. Maybe you always grew up with the knowledge of having a relationship with Jesus. Whatever is your experience of having the knowledge of saving grace, you find yourself in the ark of Noah. You're saved. You know that you're going to heaven. You're going to meet Jesus on the last day. But now that you're in the ark, you want the flood to come. You want judgment to come and you want to save yourself. That's not the heart of Jesus. The heart of Jesus is to reach those who are lost, bring them into the ark so they too can escape. Think about it. Have you ever been late for a plane or maybe a bus or a train before? I have many times. I don't know why, uh, I always find myself running. Running for trains, running for planes, running for buses. I don't know if you have that experience, but imagine, just imagine you did. You're running, okay, let's say for a plane. You're running for a plane. You're trying to find the gate of where, where it is. You're looking, you're looking at your watch. You're trying to find everywhere. Where's the, where's the plane? You're sweating, you're carrying your bags. You're praying. Maybe sometimes they even announce your name in the airport. Last call, last call. Have you ever had that experience? Now, eventually you arrive at the check-in desk, you beg them to allow you onto the plane, you just get inside and you sit down. Now, your whole desire is for the plane to take off. Now you're there. What about those who are still running for the plane? What about those who are still waiting to catch that flight? Do you consider them? That is the picture of our life today. Once we're in the plane, all we want is to take off. We don't consider those who might be running, running, waiting, waiting to catch that flight. Are you known by your love? Is your love a truly interceding love? If you read the letters of Paul, you'll see the great interceding love he had for those that God had sent him to. Remember, Paul was one soul. He was a persecutor of Christians. He hated Christians. He killed them. And then he had a divine revelation of Jesus on the way to Damascus. And his heart changed. That is the greatest miracle. His heart changed. Yes. If you read the book of Philemon in the New Testament, you see the love, the compassion with which he writes. As he grew in his relationship with Jesus, he grew in love, he grew in patience, he grew in compassion. Are the fruits of Jesus Christ evident in your life?
You see, Jesus tells us the force of compassion, the compelling force of compassion in that parable of the Good Samaritan. Where would you place yourself in that story? Are you someone who would walk the other side, cross the road, turn a blind eye? Rejecting to help those in need is rejecting to help Jesus himself. Because Jesus told us that whatever we do or don't do to the least of our fellow brothers, that we do or don't do to him. The Samaritan in that parable, he listened to that compelling power, that voice that told him that no matter who the person was who was in need, no matter what religion, no matter what faith, no matter what country, no matter what race they were, he had to help them. Let Jesus' compassion check your passion today. Let people see Jesus in your life. Because the greatest sermon you can give is not the sermon of your lips, but the sermon of your life. You might ask yourself, what can I give to others? How can I change others? You can change others, yes. How can you change others? The way you love, the way you care, the way you listen, the way you share. Remember that prayer we prayed at the beginning, Lord bless me to the extent that I love, care, show mercy and compassion to those around me. Can you pray that prayer? Whatever you have in your hand right now is a solution to someone in need. Because everyone is created to be a solution to someone in need. Everyone is created to be a solution to someone in trouble. And the greatest in the sight of God is one who loves his fellow human being. No one is perfect. I know people can hurt you and I know they've hurt you. People can betray you and I know they've betrayed you. People can cheat you and I know they've cheated you. But ask God to give you love to overflow from your heart to others. Some people ask, how can I go back to the first love I had for Jesus? When I first accepted Jesus Christ into my life, when I first had that experience of the knowledge of saving grace, let me tell you, it's not an emotional feeling. No, when the love of God is in you, naturally, spontaneously, it flows to others. Love like faith is natural. It comes from the heart. Anything that comes by force is not faith. No. You need to know how much God loves you. When you know how much God loves you, then you will know how much love you have for others. Just take a moment to appreciate what God has done for you. Think about how much he loves you. Remember when you were outside of his family, you were outside of his fold, you were a lost sheep. What did he do? He sent a pastor to preach to you. He sent people to pray for you. He kept working on you until you surrendered. Yes. In the Gospel of Luke 15, Jesus tells the religious leaders how much one life, one soul is worth to God. He compares the value of a lost soul to a prodigal son, to a lost coin, to a lost sheep. And whenever that what was lost was found, such great rejoicing is there. There's so much excitement, so much joy for a lost soul that is found. In the same way that heaven rejoices over you. Rejoice with heaven for the salvation of others. Appreciation creates value. When you appreciate what God has done in your life, how God has rescued you, how God has forgiven you, how God has wiped away your past, then that love for others, that compassion for others will naturally overflow from you, from your heart. If you find yourself today realizing that your heart has become slowly judgmental, accusing, self-righteous. Remember, as a water reflects a man's face, 
so a heart reflects a man. The heart of man is desperately wicked. That is why we need God and God is love. So if you've realized today that you need to grow in love, in God's kind of love, not love for selfish classic reasons, but love for God's sake, if you realize that today, right now you can renew your covenant with God. Right now you can ask God to come into your heart and give you love enough to overflow from your heart to others. God is ready to give you that kind of love today so that you can be his hands to those in need. You can be his eyes to see those who need what you have to offer. Remember, there's no greater joy than being Jesus to those around you. Try it today. Who knows, you may discover yourself. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 1, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Are you known by your love? Love is the greatest weapon. Remember, let your love be a truly interceding love. Instead of complaining about your country, your leaders, your family, those who have disappointed you, start praying for them. Yes, start interceding for them. Because when the love of Christ is in your heart, the world is under your feet and the sky is the limit.